morning. How are you, Christo? Here on Talk TV, one of the most uh, contentious and divisive stories of the last 24 hours, and a story you've actually asked us to return to. So we are this morning is what is being described as a toxic row over Scotland's gender recognition bill, a landmark ruling making it easier for transgender people to change their recorded gender, meaning that the process is no longer requiring a medical diagnosis. Um, and not only that, it's now open to those who are 16 and 17 years of age. Well, Felix Fern is the co-founder of the Grassroots Activism Team, Trans Activism UK, and joins me now. Morning to you, Felix. Good morning, Christo. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us here on Talk TV. Um, why do you think it needed to be made easier? Surely the diagnosis of gender dysphoria, meaning that you don't want to live within the same gender of the sex you were assigned at birth, making you either trans or gender fluid or whatever it is you may be, but surely that is a medical diagnosis and there should be at least a part of that that is medicalised. Well, there's more to it than just a medical diagnosis. Reforming the process doesn't just remove diagnosis. It kind of changes the procedure in general to make it easier for both trans people and the government. When it comes to a medical diagnosis, that's kind of a privilege in a way. For a lot of trans people, it can take years to get any kind of medical notice, let alone care. By which point, the medical service is already asking you, please have evidence of this, please show that you are living in your correct gender and whatnot. And for a lot of people, that's quite difficult if you can't have the paperwork to back it up. So it makes sense to kind of bring those procedures together. And for some people, they don't necessarily want to medically transition. To be trans, you don't have to have hormones or surgery. You just need to be able to live who you are, honestly. But the issue with that, and I'm sure you appreciate this, is that, and I'll be crude about it, you could end up in a situation where someone who has declared their gender identity, which may well be different to their body type, essentially you may well have someone with male genitalia who has received a gender recognition certificate declaring that they are female, able to then use female changing rooms, female hospital wards, and those sorts of spaces. Um, why should that be easier? And Do you appreciate women who use those spaces, biological women, having concerns about that? Honestly, not really. If the person is trans and they identify as female, their body should be irrelevant. No one is going around and flashing their genitals to people, so that shouldn't be a problem. If someone is doing it in a way to lie about their identity, the legislation has that as fraud. There are things in place to tackle that. So trans women are not a threat in female spaces. But don't, don't you... I don't believe that trans people are the threat, by the way. Um, what I think is, but it, what I think is a fair concern is that firstly, people who have ill intent will use the rights won by trans people to enter those safe spaces. It's all well and good having rules around fraud, but if it is normalised that someone who presents as male is in a female safe space, well, that is going to leave the door open for someone who is not trans but has ill intent to be in those spaces. But secondly, it's about a perception of safety. Um, for instance, you know, I've spoken to a lot of women who just fear the idea of male genitalia whomever it may be attached to and however that person may identify, being in a space where they are vulnerable and want to feel safe. Do, do, you must surely get that. Well, there are several countries that have similar legislation and work on a self-identification basis, 
and they have shown that that threat simply doesn't exist. There has not been some sudden spike in men rushing into women's changing rooms pretending to be women. This is a fear that has been created not to protect women, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, but to attack trans people. It's it's a fear-mongering that doesn't actually exist. It's, it's a bogeyman idea. It's similar I, to I, how... I, I, I disagree. I really respectfully disagree. And by so the way, if, I, 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 let me just say, I, I yeah. really want a solution to this that respects the rights of trans people. I, I genuinely do. But I spoke to a caller, for instance, yesterday on my programme. I referenced this earlier. And she was talking about how her daughter went to university and was also always quite... Um, shy about her body and was showering in I wish we had a clip of it actually um, started showering in, in, in the communal halls of residence with other women and in changing rooms and stuff and was amazed by how actually fine she felt doing that until the day a person with a penis came in who was trans so therefore again didn't pose a threat was in no way acting inappropriately but immediately, she said, I, 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 I felt vulnerable. I now don't want to get changed in that space. And she's 19. She's like, and I, 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 I love trans people. I don't want to have any issue with trans people. But I do not want to be naked in a place where there is a penis. And, and I know I'm being really crude at this time of the morning, and well, no, apologies for so, anyone so listening. Why do to, we but have do you communal get that? changing facilities? That we just shouldn't have communal changing facilities. It really is that easy. A lot of the time, when people talk about this issue, they don't even mention changing spaces. They'll often mention toilets. That's one that comes up a lot. Well, in toilets, you certainly shouldn't be seeing anyone else's genitals. I absolutely and I don't see agree. Why that should be the case in showers or changing spaces either? My sister but you is can't, a you can't, you woman, can't, but and she absolutely hates them. They make her incredibly but that's uncomfortable. That's not practical. When you you think of a gym changing room how no, can it absolutely you is have... practical it's a change that people should have women should have the right to be able to change and shower in privacy it's not about penises it's about privacy as i say my my sister is a cis woman and she absolutely hates those to make her very uncomfortable not because she's worried about seeing a penis she doesn't want to see other women whereas during the reformation bill that went ahead yesterday a cisgender woman flashed herself to parliament and young children so who is the person that is far more dangerous? Is it trans people who generally don't go around doing that? Yes, but, or but, someone who, but, to make a your, point about trans people, flash themselves? Your sister... Well, I, I agree, that's a contradiction. But your sister feeling self-conscious around other women is different to... No, the, it's not. It's well, not on, about just, her being that, self-conscious. That, 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 it's just about finish. her having autonomy and being able to have privacy and dignity. But that, that has nothing but that's, to do with other people or her being self-conscious, and all women should have that entitlement. But that's about a, a desire to be private because she doesn't want to remove her clothes. That's not about it's, the tool. Yeah, she doesn't want to be seen that, by but, other and, people, but, but and that, everyone should that, have that right. Yeah, but that's not about the tool of repression for women for centuries, the penis being near to her. That, that, that's, a, that's a different feeling of why she but would want But if you that had change. private spaces, that wouldn't be a threat. I, look, I ag actually agree. Private spaces is probably the least worst option going forward. My fear is that there are going to be many places in the world um, or many places like changing rooms, like 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 all those sorts of things. Like I think about my gym, which has got sort of, you know, sometimes you go in the changing room, there are a 100 people in there. How on earth would you end up trying to negotiate making that private for everyone? I, I don't think it's a practical well, then see, solution. Well, then think about it from the other point of view. What about the trans people who have to go through that? What about the trans men who may be using your gym and don't want to have to expose themselves to penises? It goes both ways. Everyone can feel vulnerable in a space like that. It, that doesn't change this act. This bill has nothing to do with separate spaces. To have a gender recognition certificate does not grant you access to any space. It's about things like birth and death certificates. Uh, that I, I understand right has that. always existed. This bill changes none no, of I, I think so that. No, I think people... Topic. I think people feel, though, women, and again, I'm, I'm not a woman, I'm just speaking on behalf of the people I've spoken to, people who aren't transphobic, I genuinely don't think they are. I, I think there are fringes on this debate that, 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 that undoubtedly are, but I think there are many, many moderate people in the middle who get misrepresented on this. So I just want to make, uh, make that clear. But there are, are, are people who 
fear that without the the step of medicalization and being in front of a GP for one step of it, that it it it, it opens up the floodgates to it all being easier and it all being sort of normalized to make it easier and i just wonder whether there's any part of that you sort of understand i would understand it if it were a legitimate concern there are two points to that one many countries have self-identification and similar processes they have not experienced these issues and two the gender recognition certificate is not related to single sex spaces or what spaces trans people use and have been using for decades without issue look really appreciate you answering those questions felix fern co-founder of the grassroots activism team trans activism uk all here on talk tv